All right, all right, all right. Welcome back, everyone. Here we go again. Another five tips for organizations new to federal grants. Uh, like my previous lists, these are in no particular order. And this is by no mean, by no mean, by no means definitive. So take this five and the other 15 tips, mash them up together with a few other consultants and uh, ideas you find on the internet. You know what? And I think you'll be all right. So I've got my notes here ready to go. So let's get into it. First thing, federal grants should be a nice-to-have thing, not a need-to-have thing. Uh, federal grants, in my opinion, should be used as seed funding to pilot new program ideas. They shouldn't be used for ongoing funding. You know, once your organization becomes too dependent upon federal grants, you're forever chasing them and you're at the mercy of the, the shifting political winds in D.C., and that is a really, really bad place to be. So focus your development efforts on local, state, and private funds, and save the federal dollars for the big ideas and experiments that can't be funded with other, with other grants or other funds. <clears throat> Requirements for grants change from year to year and administration to administration, depending on yeah, congressional or presidential priorities. You need to be able to adapt quickly when those changes come. You know, there's no point wasting time dwelling on the changes or complaining about them or looking back and saying, boy, it sure was better when fill in the blank, you know, that doesn't accomplish anything. The better strategy is to look at the new requirements, see if you can live with them, and see if you can design, you know, a really kick-ass program within the new guidelines, and then decide if you want to apply. Now, don't be... Don't be one of those organizations that just loves to talk new ideas to death. You know, talking and intentions are not the same as actions. You know, instead of endless meetings where you eventually talk yourself out of trying something new, just go for it. Less talk, more action, make it happen. If something doesn't work, you can always still, you know, you can always stop and go back to whatever you were doing before, or better still, try something new. Case studies are a great way to learn. And when it comes to managing federal grants, the internet is full of them. Sometime when you have a moment, go to Google News or Bing News and search on any of these phrases federal grant audit, or federal grant mismanagement, or federal grant lost, or federal grant misspent. I mean, that's just a few. You can see where I'm going with this, and you can experiment with other phrases too. You'll, you'll be really surprised how many news stories pop up documenting misspent grant funds, or stolen funds, or grants that need to be returned to the feds because of audit findings, and on and on and on. If you want to improve your own grant management skills, learn from someone else's mistakes. It's a really, really cheap or inexpensive education. <clears throat> Do you ever look to see what your representatives and senators are doing in D.C.? Congress.gov is where you want to go to keep an eye on them and all of the legislation working its way through the halls of Congress. Go check it out. In my opinion, it's one of the most underrated federal websites. Uh, since they redesigned, uh, redesigned it and incorporated all of the legislation information uh, from the old Thomas system 
uh, it's much more user friendly. Congress.gov is also a good place to look up uh, pending legislation with new grants in them. So using the search bar at the top of the web page, just search for grant award. And you might find something that's, um, you know, that's really interesting or that's uh, being sponsored by your representative or senator that, uh, that might be worth supporting. Now, this, this one, I did a separate uh, little short, I don't know, rant or commentary on it, but I wanted to include it here as the, the bonus tip. Who's the bonus tip? Yeah, the bonus tip. Um, so this attitude by grant seekers, you know, it always shocks me. And yet it, all, it also fascinates me. You know, I kind of find it interesting how people always think they know better how to spend somebody else's money. I mean, the what's not written here is when they're saying, you know, the foundation says it has limited resources, but it actually has $800 million under management. Really, that's saying, hey, look, you've got money. Why don't you make a grant to me or my organization? Well, look, we don't know anything about this foundation's long-term obligations and their investment strategy. So for all anyone knows, 90% of their money might already be you know, committed to existing or future projects. Uh, I did a much longer you know, podcast explaining how foundation grant making works. And in short, uh, foundations are required to grant 5% of their previous year's average net assets, which includes all of their administrative expenses. So what looks like a lot of money isn't always a lot of money. Uh, let's say, and I'll go through the, the hypothetical here too. Um, let's say for discussion purposes, and round numbers that 800 million that's mentioned in the tweet was the foundation's previous year's average net assets. So 5% of that would be 40 million. And let's keep going with this and say that the foundation spends 10% or 4 million on its administrative costs. Uh, that would leave 36 million to distribute. And again, we're just going to keep this very basic. Uh, to you and me, that seems like a big number, and it's really not, uh, and here's why. A foundation with $36 million to grant isn't going to make $360, $100,000 one-year grants. I mean, that's just insane. They wouldn't have the staff capacity to handle the oversight workload, not to mention uh, to get to 360 awards, they would need to review and score thousands, th I mean, thousands of proposals. Instead, they're more likely to make 10 to 30 large multi-year grants between one and $3 million spread out over three to five years. And whatever is left over, they could use to make smaller grants. Now, this does a couple of things. First, it helps them go through a lot, a lot of the money they need to spend on grants without overburdening the staff. <laughs> and secondly, they now have funds committed for several years into the future. So let's say next year, they have another 36 million to, uh, to grant out. Most of that is already committed to the existing multi-year grants. <clears throat> and this doesn't even take into account uh, that foundations can set aside funds for uh, major projects for up to 60, six zero months. That is, they can set aside five years worth of funds in one year, and it would count against the amount they need to distribute that year. So back to the $36 million I used as the example before, a foundation could set aside 30 million in one fell swoop, leaving only $6 million to make grants with that year. So, you know, the bottom line is every foundation sets their own rules. You like it or not, it's just it's just part of the game. If they say they have limited resources, well, you know, there's just there's not a lot you can do about that except move on. 
Um, there are many, many, many private and corporate foundations out there. If you, you know, struggle with one, just keep at it until you find another one that's a good fit for your organization. Well, look at that. That is all I have this time. Thank you very much for investing your time here today. If you have any questions, please email me through my website or reach out on social media. I'm here to help any way I can. If you found this useful, give it a like or a thumbs up and feel free to leave a comment. I always love feedback. And oh, of course, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss future presentations. All right, cool. Thanks. And I will see you next time.